Okay guys, so this week we're checking out the G-Lang Wasp V2. This is uh, kind of a weird one. 65 millimeter toothpick um, with some pretty small motors and a very, uh, you know, a minimalistic power setup with a whoop all-in-one flight controller where it only has, a, only has 5 amp ESCs. So very, very low in terms of the power setup here. And not really sure who this is going to be good for because I have a feeling that they're targeting beginners with this with kind of a low power setup, but because of the motor and the prop and the weight and everything, this actually is going to be a little bit harder to control for beginners uh, versus something that has a little bit more power. And that's because these little tiny 0802 motors, these are 0802 14,000 kV motors, are trying to spin this 65 millimeter prop. You know, sure, it's not a very heavy prop. Um, but because it's trying to control the whole weight of this thing, it if you're turning a lot, if you're doing a lot of like maneuvers, freestyle, that kind of thing, it's gonna or even racing, going to be a little bit hard to control because it gets a little but kind of floaty and, and it's basically it's hard for the motor to spin up the prop and spin down the prop quickly enough to give it proper control when you're trying to make a lot of quick maneuvers. Now, if you're just kind of flying it in a lot of like straight lines and making like slow swooping turns like you, like you saw in the parking lot video that I'm showing you here, little section, this um, is okay for that. You know, you're gonna be able to build up speed because basically you uh, make the turn, you change the direction and you build up speed. And as you build up speed, you're going in one direction. All the motors are basically, you know, ramping up power and you're just building up speed and it goes pretty fast that's another reason why I'm like eh, i'm not really sure if this is going to be good for beginners i think this is like more of a kind of a spec racing thing if you want to see if you can do like a 2s race something like that with something light with uh, little tiny motors that kind of thing that's kind of what i'm thinking this is for but honestly there's a lot of better choices out there I'm not really sure if this is going to be a good choice for anybody really um just because I would much rather have something of this size, have like 1102 motors and at least 10 amp ESCs. This is uh, very likely to, you, if you have a hard crash uh, and a voltage spike, uh, one of the 5 amp ESCs are probably going to end up uh, being fried. I mean, it does have a capacitor here on the XT30. Um, I mean, and, and the frame is fairly light. I mean, it's not super durable looking, but it's thick. See, the arms are really thick, but they're very skinny. I'll just measure these. So the, the basically the width of the arm is about two and a half millimeters, but the the thickness of the arm. Let's see. Well, we can't count. We can't count the motor wire. So we'll count over here. It's about four, over four millimeters in thickness. So it's a very strange geometry for a, a frame. You know, it, I mean, obviously it's got a lot of strength in this direction up and down but not as much sideways so I mean it doesn't really flex a whole lot and this is a really light setup here and everything so um, you know uh, not really sure how durable this is if it, it depends on how you crash it and where you crash it now they have a you know standard stuff here a 25 to 200 milliwatt video transmitter that's separate it's not on the same board and then they have this uh, G-Lang branded camera very no, poor camera for cloudy conditions as you're seeing here in the flight footage. I wish they would have something a little better, but I think they're doing that obviously to keep the cost down. So they kind of going for like an off-market cheaper camera versus like say a run cam or a Caddx. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. Um, the receiver in here is an R81 from Radio Master. It's kind of like an XM Plus. They do offer an XM Plus version as well as Fly Sky and the Spectrum receiver versions. So those are all available if you um, want to get the receiver version for your radio or you can just get the plug and play and add your own receiver but the receiver is actually below the all-in-one flight controller board so it's actually as you can see you know it's kind of hard to see but it's below this little plate here and the bind buttons right there you do have to hold the bind button down while you power it up to bind it to your radio and it binds in d8 mode and then the um the ninth channel is going to be the uh, rssi values so you have eight control channels and then the ninth channel is going to be rssi for that receiver i haven't done a formal review on that video or a formal review on that receiver yet is the manual for that um receiver seems fine in terms of range it's not 
anything special is probably going to be like one kilometer or something like that. Um, obviously, there's a lot of other receiver options out there, but it's pretty small and light. There's the uh, weight of the whole drone here. This is no battery. Coming in at uh, 35.4 grams. Yeah, fairly light. Flew it around with this uh, 2S450. And that battery is 27.9. So it's, uh, the whole drone weighs a little bit more than the battery. So altogether it's like 63.3 grams. So and then once you sort of hitting that sort of you know, above 60 grams on this, I think with the uh, Oedo 2 motor, you're just having a harder time controlling this thing. Now, they're even offering this um, Insta360 Go mount that's going to go basically in the top here, and then you use the two zip ties to hold it in place. Uh, I didn't actually test it with my Insta360 Go because I crashed my Insta360 Go. It's got a cracked lens now, so uh, that video probably wouldn't look very good. Um, so I didn't test this, but I'm thinking that if you are going to be flying this with that extra 20 grams of weight on here, plus the amount, uh, I, don't know how much, I don't know how much that weighs, but it might be another 4 or 5 grams, another maybe 25 grams of weight on top of everything, it's going to be close to like 90 grams. Yeah, this is going to be very, I mean, I mean, it'll, it'll be okay for just kind of just cruising around in straight lines, you know, trying to fly really smooth. And, you know, if you're using the Insta360 Go for that, Insta360 Go for that kind of footage, that'll be fine. It'll fly. It's I'm not sure how long the flight times will be. It'll be shorter than what I got here. I think I got like maybe two and a half minutes on the 450. So yeah, it's going to be shorter than that. But that's what that's for. You can use it if you want. I didn't because my camera's broken. But that's uh, another option. They do also have um, extra battery strap here, extra rubber band for the uh, battery on the bottom. That's what I used. And then a spare set of the props. These are the uh, Gem Fan 65 millimeter. I think these are the version two of those props. That's everything that comes in the box. Uh, no, you don't get a battery uh, like a lot of other G G Lang models. This one's very minimalistic. So they have these LEDs on here, which I'm not. Uh, I don't know. I think it just sucks power. Uh, no one really looks at them anyway. I mean, obviously you can plug them in, and you'll see the nice flashing, pretty lights. I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and just show that to you because everyone likes pretty lights. So that's what it looks like when you know if you have. Uh, Spectators watching you flying that around might look pretty cool, maybe at night. Um, they're not, they don't weigh too much, you know, but of course, at this weight, every gram counts, and I'm sure that's probably two, three grams right there. Plus, it's drawing power from the battery uh, as well, so it'll shorten your flight time a little bit. So, you know, G Lang likes to uh, make their drones have a little more bling than some of the other ones out there, so they tend to have a lot of LEDs. I think that's what their designers seem to like. But, you know, um, overall, like I said before, I'm not exactly sure who this is going to be really good for. Um, there's definitely better 65mm um, toothpick options out there. But, I mean, for this class, I would recommend going to a 3-inch toothpick than the 65mm or the 2.5-inch size. It's just, uh, you know, it's unless you really need to be like in 2S or you know, under like a certain size or weight, for example, then, yeah, I would just get, go to a 3-inch size, that's my opinion. Anyway, that's good for this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.